Hello, I'm Michelle Williams Gamaker, and I'm at the Courtauld today in the medieval room. And we are looking at the triptych with the crucifixion, which is actually by a painter that we don't know, but it's from the 14th century, so we're going back in time. I chose this work because it's a painting of two parts. Triptychs are actually three parts, but what I mean by that is, is that the outer panel, it's a rare example of seeing both the inside and the outside in one go. I'm interested in these individuals that we see here. They're all saints, Saint Andrew and Saint Louis of Anjou in the top left corner, and Saint Clair and Saint Paul in the top right. And lower down, somebody that we might all recognize is the Saint Francis of Assisi, who was a saint rumored to have um, a very special relationship with animals. And in the Bible, there are stories of him preaching to the birds. Apparently, he was able to um, converse with them, or they might be seen to land on his hands whilst he prayed. Um, I really like this symbolic connection between um, man and beast, or man and animal, because I think that perhaps this is a wider conversation, not around whether or not we're religious or Christian, but more around how we might communicate or connect with the world or with the natural world. And so when looking at St. Francis here, if you look at the, the tree, it's full of birds from all around the world. It's almost this impossible composition because there seem to be kind of partridges or pheasants and parakeets and lower down an owl. And I'd love to see a tree like that. And I think there are other details to think through um, what each saint is holding. And there's like a staff and a sword, and each saint obviously has a personal connection with those objects. And I guess in today's workshop, I'm thinking about what we hold dear to us and how we might communicate with objects and how we might hold things close to us. Looking at the interior panels of the triptych, what we can see is um, the crucifixion scene um, flanked by other scenes from Christ's life. What's really wonderful about this painting is that there seems to be finished, um, finished sections and unfinished sections. I quite like that almost as a metaphor for life, that some things are perfectly um, worked out for us and other things remain a bit open-ended. If you look at the sequence, I say sequence because I'm a filmmaker, but at the scene where Christ um, washes the apostles' feet, can you notice how some of the heads are partly, partly present? They seem to be in a golden fog or n maybe the painter was interrupted. I'm not sure what happened there. Also, there's a hand holding a chalice, um, a kind of goblet, and it seems to come out of nowhere. I think this would be a really interesting thing for us to think about when we're collaging today. How might a hand appear um, in, in space? How might it be connected to something other than the rest of the human body? So the next work we're looking at is by an unknown Belgian artist from the works from 1490 to 1500. And what we're looking at, it's called The Virgin and Child with Donor, which um, seems like a strange title. The donor here is the person on the right of this panel. But what it is, is um, a painting that opens and closes like a book. And this was apparently very popular in the Netherlands. So what we have is the Virgin and Child, and if you see the, the child Christ is holding some cherries in his hand, and those cherries represent the rewards of heaven, and um, the donor is praying, and you could imagine as the book closes, he's also brought closer to Christ and to the Virgin. Um, it, it's a really intimate painting. As much as it's also showing up to some extent, the fact that the book could close creates a kind of devotional object, which is also about um, keeping what's important to you close. It's also reminding me of the images that we keep close to us. Most of us use mobile phones and have our phones 
full of, of images of people that we care about. And I'm thinking about this as a medieval version of a, of a selfie or something, or a medieval version of an iPhone or a, or a mobile phone. Just this idea that when you have something special, you want to keep it close. So we're looking at a statuette of the Virgin and Child carved in ivory, made around the 1300s. And why I've chosen this is, is to have a sculpture to look at. This is a sculptural relief, so it would have actually have been backed onto something. The, f the back of it, which we can't see, is flat. But um, what we can see of this sculpture is the Virgin holding her child, Christ, and in her other hand is, I assume, a dove, or maybe the symbolic Holy Spirit, and Christ is also holding a fruit. Um, what I like about this piece is it would have most likely have been stored in a tabernacle where the wine and bread would be kept for the holy service, but it's clearly a very treasured item because if you go in to zoom into this, you'll see that there's signs of wear on the Virgin's head and on Christ's head. And that's more than likely that in prayer you would touch that area. So it's been worn away over time. So this is um, an object that clearly has been loved and shows the signs of that. 